Ducktape Drags 2024 is nearly upon us, which means it's about time I got the video from last year's event finished. As usual, this is a multi-parter since there was so much to see, so make sure you subscribe to get notified when the next one comes out and sit back for a look around Duct Tape Drags 2023. Friday afternoon is prime time for Test and Tune. While Freiburger is leaving the convoy down from the LA, those who made it to the track early are taking advantage of the open lanes to try and get the best, or perhaps just something, from their rides. In addition, at the 2023 event was the Tri-5 Shootout. As the name suggests, this is restricted to Tri-5 Chevys, so there were plenty of them making passes in amongst everything else in readiness for the knockout. Not everything going down the track is blistering, jammed full of turbos and LS swaps. Some are just your average beaters stretching their legs. Some of those runs are more successful than others in different ways. Both this boosted fox body and Jag red lit the tree, but whilst the Mustang made a full pass down the track, Jag had more of an unceremonious end to its run. Fortunately, there was no major downtime on the lanes, and racing got back underway soon after, with one of the more disparate lineups so far, at least at face value. Derek from Vice Grip Garage is here fronting the burnout pit and has a selection of cars from his channel along with Freiburger who brought his 8 second Model A, the F-Rod. Friday night really ends up all about the social side of the event around the bonfire, sharing stories and catching up since the last event. It's a great atmosphere hanging out with Freiburger, Dulcich as well as Derek. If you've not been, I highly recommend you get to the event someday. Saturday is the main event. The 5k hoopty challenge races and qualifying are much later in the day, with test and tune and open lanes beforehand. The pits and car park area is really busy, home to both the car show, the burnout pit and racers alike mingling into one homogenous melting pot of vehicles. And there's a great selection of vehicles to wander around. I've tried to identify makes and models and years, but I'm no expert on Americana, and given the amount of powertrain options, not to mention swaps conceivable, I'm not confident I'm going to be able to identify all that much specifically in that vein. This Dodge Coronet from 1959 is quite notable, as this body style was the first to carry the Challenger name as the Dodge Silver Challenger. Unlike this two-tone scheme, the Silver Challenger quite predictably came painted in silver all over with a huge list of extras over the normal Coronet. This included white wall tyres, full wheel covers, electric windshield wipers, silver metallic vinyl and black upholstery, deep pile carpeting, armrests and sun visors. This is the third generation of Pontiac Catalina. The model was first built in the same year the previous Coronet was made, 1959, but technically this is the fourth Catalina line Pontiac made, as between 1950 and 1958, the moniker adorned the Chieftain as its highest trim package. This third gen came in a two and four door variant, which you might remember from the very first episode that Roadkill released. 
I think this is a 1934 five-window Ford Coupe, based solely on the shape of the top of the grille. There aren't a lot of other features left that I can use to tell this apart from the 33 model year, and I'm still not 100% sure either way. Originally, the Model 40B would have had the 221 cubic inch flathead V8, but this appears to have a small block Chevy in there instead. At least I think it's a small block Chevy. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Minis aren't that easy to pin down to a specific year, the exterior almost unchanged from 1959 to 2000. As a pickup it could be between 61 and 83, but the external door hinges mean it's probably no later than 1970. Modifications include wide arches and mirrors straight off a Mark 7 along with the grille, which was stamped steel on the pickup and not chrome. And let's not forget the engine, as there were no Cooper pickups from the factory lineup. The Chrysler New Yorker Mark spans almost 60 years from 1938 to 1996, and the C46 series debuted in 1949 and was the first major update to the body style post-war after production restarted in 46. This 54 example is the final year of the long wheelbase sedan and looks to be in excellent condition, fitted with the firepower V8 and being a deluxe trim left the factory with 235 horsepower. Parked right next door to the New Yorker is something similar looking from a long dormant mark, a DeSoto Custom Coupe. The huge chrome grille was new for 1950, but the body styling was mostly carried over from the pre-war S10 and used the 236 cubic inch straight 6. The mild patina on this car doesn't harm the looks at all and pairs really nicely with the extremely clean bright work and white walls. I'm Art with Veteran Idiot. So we got out here at Duct Tape Drags today. I got a 69 Chevy C10 that we picked up from Derek at Vice Grip Garage and put back together. As everything that he has, it didn't have any brakes, so we put that all together, got it out on the road, and it runs and drives now. I've also got my uh, 66 F250 flatbed here, and we'll be putting a 460 in later. Having a lot of fun out here with these guys. Burnout pits here starting in a little bit. That should be some fun as well, but you can check us out on uh, YouTube at Veteran Idiot. Also got our buddies over here, Taka's House of Horsepower, they brought their Nova Wagon. If you haven't seen one of those, it's a pretty cool little vehicle. So we went out to Tennessee in December to pick this thing up and then hauled it back. It wasn't going to drive back, so had to be on a trailer, but didn't take much to get it out there on the road. The main reason I ended up on the back of Art's truck for a chat was because he saw me filming into the burnout pit from the ground and invited me up to get a better view. There were links for both his and Tackett's channel in the description. From the back of the truck, you could get a really good view over the burnout pit, and short of a drone, it was the best way you were going to get a look in over the crowd. The burnout pit was busy all day, and longtime viewers may recognize that black beard Jeep who's been on the channel before. One extremely memorable car at the event was the Holy Goat, brought along by Paul Barn Garage and were emphatically told that their bullet ridden GTO would never go down the track, despite two attempts to pass tech. This car drove all the way here and back to the Midwest afterwards and there's lots of videos about it on Dalton's channel, check the link in the description. Back over in the pits there were more cars than ever, some just back from the lanes, others just soaking up the sun. This 1970 Mercury Cougar is the same generation as Dulcich and Freiburger's Bangshift Cougar from Roadkill Garage. Though theirs is a 67, the first year the model was introduced, and this is the final year of not only the first gen, but also the hideaway headlights on the Cougars. The 
The only way I could tell this was a 65 was because it was the first year the headlights were encompassed by the grille surround instead of just a chrome ring on the fender. I wasn't sure what year this Ford F1 was. Fortunately, Carl put their Instagram on the front so I could find out nice and easy not only the year, but it's also running a flathead V8. And before he picked it up to turn up to Duct Tape Drags 2023, it hadn't run for 25 years. Really impressive and great to see it. I really like the full width chrome on the first gen Firebird in 67 and 68. For the final year of the first gen, the chrome only featured on the grill portions between the lights, and I'm not sure I like that as much. Next to the Firebird is a clean looking third gen Sierra 3500 Dually, but despite being a first gen to have the option of a diesel V8 behind the grill, this one has been swapped for a 12 valve Cummings, sporting a giant turbo. The Sport Fury was the highest trim level for the 4th gen and the first year back on the full-size C-body platform, having been downsized to the B-body between 1962 and 64. The 4th gen was also the first generation Fury to feature the 440 from the factory. Now with a number plate like this, there's only one theme this car could be, but if you have to ask, who are you going to call? This 1973 Bonneville has been kitted out with all sorts of props, lights and sirens to emulate the original Ecto-1. Since the original 1959mm Meteor Ambulance is pretty hard to come by these days, it's not surprising more modern versions are being made. Interestingly, the original Caddy Ecto-1 would have had almost double the horsepower from the factory at 325 horsepower against the 400 cubic inch Bonneville's 170. This one's still a work in progress with some fins yet to be finished emulating the original that had that little bit more. All right, how you doing everybody? My name's Duke. I'm here with uh, Pedal Box here at the Duct Tape Drags 2023. Um, we're here just hanging out with everybody today. Uh, this is my 1930 Ford Model A. Uh, this is the second time we've been on the channel. And uh, when you guys saw this previously, uh, it had a big black Chevy in it. Um, little bit different configuration the only thing that's the same on it now is the cab and the grill shell uh, since then a uh, guy guy got in it you know pretty heavy was hammering on it blew the motor up split the transmission uh, and the wife gave me the okay to build my dream car so what we have here is uh, the frame is a uh, floating frame design it's a two by four quarter inch thick steel frame with uh, flywheel gusset plates it's the suspension it's sitting on is a suspension, uh, all cantilever suspension from Village Customs and Joshua Joyce. Um, the, everything was put together in my two car garage by myself. Uh, the motor is a 12 valve Cummins, 5.9 12 valve Cummins with compound turbos. It's got a HT3B turbo and that's a 7686 for the big turbo and a 5667 small charger built by Tillman built chargers. The uh, injection pump is a, a radical VE injection pump from Ratman Performance. Uh, and the whole car has been gone through, wired myself by me in my, in my garage. I have about, uh, about 2,500 hours of fab time in this build. Um, it pushes right at about 475 horsepower and about 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. So uh, on the way here, I was locked up in third gear with the torque converter locked and about 60 pounds of boost that broke all four rear tires loose. So it's, it's a monster. It, uh, it's a handful. It's been on the road for about two weeks. I'm still kind of getting used to it, but um, we can walk you through a little bit. Um, back here in the back, we have a, uh, this is a Dana 70, okay, from a one ton Dodge 93. Um, all the wiring in this is all cloth wiring, and that's a cloth wiring kit from Speedway Motors. Uh, back here we have our fuel cell, uh, dual compressors for the air ride, uh, cup holders, the shifter is a Kilduff shifter. Um, it's like a Linko, basically kind of like a Linko, but it gives you, it's a hybrid. Gives you the option either running it in automatic or you can slam through the gears. Um, but everything in here is hand built. Um, the motor, the motor, this is out of a 93 Dodge uh, D350. Um, it has been gone through and built to the nines. The head is all the internals on the head and the valve train are all titanium. Uh, the, it's got an O-ring head. It's uh, bored 20 over. It's got uh, a high volume oil pump. Uh, man, I'm trying to remember everything off, you know. 
Uh, but and she runs great. I mean, she she runs down the road. It's got uh, 354 gears, um, full posi rear end, and it runs runs fantastic. Uh, it's been a journey building my dream car. Um, if you guys want to see more content of it, I have an Instagram. I'm sure they'll probably put it up on the screen or something for you guys, but you can check it out there if you want to see more content of the build. So you guys take it easy, and thank you, Pedal Box. Back over at the Vice Grip burnout pit, there was still a queue of people lining up to roast tyres. Thanks very much for watching this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when the next episode from Duct Tape Drags comes out. And don't forget, we've got plenty of other projects on the go as well. If you'd like to support us building those projects, you can check out shop.pedalbox.show or patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow to support us in a variety of different ways. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Who thinks the engine's going first? Who thinks the tires are going first?